In this tutorial, we're going to intentionally break a virtual machine. So it's a warning. Only follow these directions on a VM you can afford to destroy. If you follow these directions on a machine that has important data or is your host operating system, uh, there's a chance that it what we're going to do here won't work. Anything can happen. We're going to break it and then we're going to fix it. So you want a VM in VirtualBox that's easily replaceable. Alrighty then, so um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make this machine so it doesn't boot. And the easiest way to do that on Ubuntu um, 20.04 is to CD to the boot directory and inside of there we have the grub directory. Now, grub is our bootloader and the parameters that it needs is inside of this grub.cfg uh, file. And this is essentially what, um, if we look down further, and I've mentioned this before, we have things like the advanced options for Ubuntu. You know, this is what we see at the very first when we boot it up. So this grub.cfg is important. And if we delete it, it's not going to boot up. So let's do an rm grub.cfg and let's kind of do like, uh, we'll pretend like it's been corrupted. And I need to do a sudo su. I'm going to go ahead and do an rm grub.cfg. Let's verify that inside a virtual box under settings, uh, we don't have anything in the CD-ROM drive. So you want to go to your CD-ROM and just go ahead and make sure that there's nothing in there. We want to verify that this uh, move we've just made actually broke the machine and it will not boot at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and just going to click the X on the top and we'll just do a hard power off at this point. It's the easiest way, quickest way to shut it down. I'm going to go ahead and start it back up and let's see what happens. And you can see that uh, we are at the Grub bootloader and um, we're going to have some real issues here. The operating system is not able to load. So I'm going to click X again and we're going to make sure that we choose uh, power off. I'm going to hit the right control button to get out of this with my mouse because it was trapped. Uh, I'm going to hit X, going to choose power off, and now we're going to load a live CD. So I'm going to choose settings. We're going to go to storage. I'm going to click on the CD-ROM. And in my case, I've got it queued up, but just find your ISO for Linux. I'm going to fire that up. And it should boot from that live CD now. And it won't interact with the hard drive at all. Everything will be run straight off of this live CD. I'm going to pause the video while this uh, live CD boots up and we'll get in there and we will repair the bootloader. So here I am booted with my live CD. A hallmark of that is I can see that it says Ubuntu at Ubuntu. And also I can do a sudo su and it's not going to prompt me for a password at all at any point. So just to demonstrate, if we do a dfah, um, I'll do a df hyphen h. You can see that there's no dev SDA, there's no dev SDA one, everything is running right off the CD and those hard drives are sort of working in the background here. So I'm gonna CD to um, slash directory and we're gonna mount dev SDA five, which is our root directory from the other machine to slash MNT. And we're gonna put it on the mount folder. And I'd like to point out right now, because we're about to use a command called chroot, we're going to change the root directory this machine is utilizing. If I cd to home right now, we have and a directory of Ubuntu in slash home. Um, there are those key directories that contain devices and uh, the proc directory that contains hardware information and the sys directory uh, that are all uh, live on this system right now. If I ls, for example, or if I cat 
proc slash CPU info, I'm going to get current CPU info. But if I CD into MNT, for example, and I CD into proc, right, I do an LS, there's nothing there because there's no current CPU info inside of MNT proc because MNT contains all of the stuff from SDA5, but none of it is live or working right now. So we need to trick this computer into thinking that this is our actual root directory. So we've got to bind some directories up into MNT. So I'm going to do a mount hyphen hyphen bind dev, and we're going to mount that to mount dev. Now all the devices that are in slash dev are also available in MNT dev. We're going to do the same thing for uh, dev, I don't know if this one's necessary, pts to mount dev pts. We're going to mount hyphen hyphen bind. Uh, we're going to do again the proc directory to MNT proc. And I'm going to mount hyphen hyphen bind sys to mount sys. And so now all of these live directories that are off the root of the live CD now have counterparts in the MNT directory that contains our SDA5 file system. Awesome. Okay, so now we can do the change root command. So we can do ch root and then slash MNT. And that is going to change the root directory. It's going to make the computer think that the MNT directory is actually the root directory. Now, a minute ago when I did ls, in the slash home directory, we saw Ubuntu, right? But now I'll do a cd slash home, do an ls, and you'll see that we have student. Because we have done a ch root, and we've told Linux that the actual root of the file system is slash MNT, so now it's treating that as the root. So now we have full control of the system as if we booted it live. So the command we run to update the, the grub bootloader, and let's cd to boot, and if you recall, we deleted that grub.cfg, it's in uh, boot grub. We deleted that uh, grub.cfg file, well, we need to regenerate that. The command we run is update hyphen grub. And it's going to go through and it's going to evaluate uh, where all of our kernels are, what it is um, we're going to need to boot up. If I do an ls now, we have a grub.cfg file. That uh, should allow this system to boot. Let's go ahead and also do a grub hyphen install dev sda. And that should take that configuration file and it should put bootloader code in the first 512 bytes of, uh, well, the first 446 bytes of SDA, but that first sector where the computer expects to find the boot code. Um, at this point, we should be able to turn this computer off and boot from dev SDA, and we should have recovered our boot process. So I'm going to do this. We're going to hit X, and we're going to power off this live CD. Let's go to settings again, and let's make uh, sure that under storage, this Ubuntu, this Ubuntu CD has been removed. So we have an empty CD-ROM drive. I'm going to click Start. Let's find out what happens. It looks to me like the uh, grub bootloader has been restored here. And uh, we're booting into our Ubuntu system, and we've gone in, and we've done a recovery there using ch root. All right, excellent. So that's a pretty good technique if you get locked out of a Linux system. In the next video, we're going to go through that exact same process, um, except we're going to recover a forgotten password. Now, there's a challenge for this. Uh, read the challenge 
And if you can do the challenge without watching the password recovery series, that would be awesome. But if you need to watch the password recovery series in order to solve it, it's the same process, except we're going to reset a password on the system. Uh, we have a video that will walk you through the process of resetting a lost password on Ubuntu using this same live CD CH root process.